start the cinema here. So, final episode in series review. Fair warning, I'm going to get into some spoilers, so consider this your spoiler warning. Before we really get into it, I just have a couple questions that kind of relate to the series and final episode. Whatever happened to Susie? This is probably just me forgetting what happened to her, but she's been pretty absent. I would have thought she'd come back. I mean, she seemed to have some sort of connection with Swamp Thing, unlike some of the other people that got infected. Just figured that would play into some sort of plot line. Probably for a future second season that would never happen now. Another question I have. What's with the Blue Devil comics in the Swamp Thing universe? Was the Blue Devil already a comic book character that got a movie and now... Because that's his most iconic role, Daniel Cassidy can now transform into him. I don't really get it, to be honest with you. I mean, it's not like in Logan, where the X-Men comics are a fictional telling of what was supposed to be actual non-fictional events regarding the X-Men adventures in that universe. Anyway, it's just a little confusing. Anyway, let's actually get into the episode plot lines. So, Daniel Cassidy can, I guess, now can change to Blue Devil at will, I guess? And he can now leave Mirai, which he actually does right at the beginning of the episode. He said something about destiny, how he is now as a different destiny, something along those lines. I'm just, I have so many questions what that could mean. Probably, again, say for a future second season that will never happen, or a spinoff that will now most likely never happen. Another plot line is with Maria Sunderland in the Mental Institute. Suddenly, Madame Zandu can now just teleport in there. And, to, I guess, to help give her comfort in there, she lets her, like, see the ghost or a version of her daughter's ghost in the Institute. I'm not sure why Madame Zandu thought that would be a good idea for, to do with for Maria, but at least it's some sort of closure for the character. The Cable slash Avery plotline went about more or less what I thought it was going to go, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, it's still done well, just really no real surprises. Except... What the hell was that? I mean, he coughed up like a pe uh, like a leaf or like a part of a plant, Avery, like in his car after he's done the deed of killing Sheriff Cable. Like he coughed up a leaf, holds it in his hand, like, what the fuck? Again, probably a future season two plot line that'll now never happen. You know, I thought they would have actually done a better job of trying to wrap up some closure for these characters. Anyway. Moving on, let's go into the Abby plot line. At least the Abby plot line that deals with Jason Woodrue. So Jason Woodrue's got a little bit of a Hannibal Lecter vibe going, and he ends up eating part of like one of the fake organs he took from Swamp Thing, and yeah, he goes a little bit off the deep end. And tries to force his wife to take it for regenerative powers, but then he gets caught and arrested, and his wife is taken to the hospital. Luckily, she didn't eat any of it. So, that played out appropriately creepy and exciting. Now, the actual Swamp Thing plotline in this final episode was exciting, fun, and kind of intense, too. Some good action going, and I love, like, the little thing he does where, like, his shoulders get, like, spikes, like, on his shoulders. I thought that was, like, a really good thing to do when he's going to battle. He's got like a really nice confrontation with Nathan at the end of that fight. And by nice, I mean intense. And then afterwards, he, I guess he's like the ghost of actual Alec Holland. And they have actually a really deep and emotional conversation with one another. And it's actually probably the most emotional part of the entire series. And it, it reminds me of some of the best part of Swamp Thing stories. So it, it can get philosophical. And towards the end of the episode, we get Swamp Thing and Abby reuniting, showing that they do care for each other. That, 
and that they will stick together through whatever may come in the future, which we'll now never see because it got cancelled. <sighs> okay, despite that, it's still a really nice, touching, and welcome reunion between the two characters right at the show's ending. Now, there is a post credit scene, and I know I've already said this, but consider this your spoiler warning. So the post credit scene shows Matt Cable going into the station where they've been keeping Jason Woodrow. He sees a bunch of plants everywhere. Sees that he broke out of his cell, killed some people, and we get to see Jason Woodrow now transformed into Floronic Man, and then he lunges at Matt Cable, assumingly killing him as he screams. I like this, and yet not as much as I thought. First of all, I just like that we actually get to see the transformation of Jason Woodrow into the Floronic Man. I mean, once Alan Morris took over, the Floronic Man was the first actual villain under his run that Swamp Thing went up against. So it's a nice little t shout out to that era. What I didn't like about it was that the physical design they went for him. They, it's just basically a more standard version of Swamp Thing, just all green, which is kind of disappointing. I mean, from what I've seen of him in the comics, his his body is made out of like bark with like patches of green and plants over him, but he's like mainly a bark based creature with patches of like plants across his body. I thought that was kind of like an interesting design that they could have gone with him. But of course, I guess they were already pushing the budget for the show a little bit, so I guess they decided to go with this. So I'm happy to actually see the transformation, just not a big fan of the design. Anyway, so that is the final episode. Some parts I didn't like, that probably could have done a little bit better, but the main stuff I wanted it to be good, it was actually good. Now, how is the show overall? We've seen that all 10 episodes, well... It would have originally been 13, but again, they cut that out. So anyway, how is the show? I really liked it. Although, admittedly, it's not perfect. Some parts are a little too slow for my taste. And, yeah, there were some decisions, or they went a certain direction with something that I really wasn't a big fan of. But... Overall, I did really like the show. I am happy I get to watch it as a big Swamp Thing fan myself. I'm just sad we'll never actually be able to see more Swamp Thing. There are some plot lines that I probably would really like to see, some characters I would have really liked to see. But, hey, on the bright side, we have season two of Doom Patrol coming up soon, sometime in the next year. So I'm excited for that too. So, that's all I really have to say. So, like, comment, subscribe, share, and I'll see you guys next time.